the Hebrew Apologetic of the Week. And the Hebrew Apologetic of the Week is, is Mother's Day pagan? Uh It's Mother's Day's pagan. Now we are told in the commandments, in the Ten Commandments, we are told to honor our mother and fathers. Is that correct? That's part of the Ten Commandments. We are to honor our mothers and our fathers. Now, before I go there, last week um, or a couple weeks ago, many of you, I've heard some of your responses uh, and our hundreds of followers, uh, our assemblies um, throughout the United States. Uh, I have heard some, um, they have uh, appreciated the last uh, Hebrew apologetic concerning how long would it was the Mashiach's ministry, whom the world called Christ. And obviously they've been told a lie uh, or fabricated information that his ministry is three and a half years. See, most people, they believe what they know, but really don't know what they believe. Because Christianity have codified us in such a way that had made us inept, that has made us um, not only inept, uh, but has made us in, made us doxile. And so we don't study. We just have regurgitated dogma. And as a result, we are killing our sons and daughters because we are loyal to our father's doctrine. And no one ever asks a question, why? Or why do we believe what we believe? So we have a bunch of people who are not only indolent, but lazy enough, uh, lazy, uh, and they do not scrutinize the scripture or integrate the scriptures um, because this is what my mama said this is what my daddy said and so these things are passed down from generation to generation um, without anyone asking why do we do the things that we do why do we believe in the things that we do but one thing about the awakening it won't it, it doesn't just provide a platform for you to ask questions but it will ask you question it will question you Why do you believe what you believe? And so everything is proven through scripture. It's right there. But you see the danger of eliminating the Old Testament. When you eliminate the Old Testament, you eliminate the veracity of the scriptures altogether. Because everything that that whom the world called Christ said, everything is found in the Old Testament. Everything. In fact, in the New Testament, there are 250 what we call allusions or direct quotes from the Old Testament. I was on the air a couple weeks ago talking to this pastor who is newly awakened, and uh, he mentioned about, uh, well, Christ gave a new command. He said, a new command I give to you. And I had to show him that he really was expounding on Matthew chapter 22, where Matthew chapter 22, he says that you will love the Lord your God and you will love your neighbor. As yourself, and upon these two, you can hang, not eliminate all the other laws, but you hang all laws upon those two. And so, when Mashiach says to the disciples, I give unto you a new command that you love one another, I asked them, Is that a new command? It cannot be, because in Matthew chapter 22, love Lord your God, well, he's quoting directly from. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Love your neighbor as yourself. He's quoting directly from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. He's quoting directly from the Torah. Why? Because if he makes his own words up, then he sins. He breaks the Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. You don't add to the word. You do not subtract to the word. This is why Mashiach said, I speak not my own words, John chapter 12, verse 49, but him who sent me. This is why the Mashiach, whom the world called Christ, says in John chapter 7, verse 16, he says that I have no doctrine. The doctrine I have is not my own. So what we have mainstream religions have tried to do is bring a demarcation or delineation between the Mashiach in the New Testament and then the Old Testament. But what you will find out is that Um, He had no new commandments or no new laws. So that's why it's important to understand the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Why? Because in the Old Testament, it tells you that he would die in the middle of the week on a Wednesday. 
We've been teaching it for years, right? He died on Wednesday. He rose on Saturday. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. He rose on, and that is what the Old Testament says. This is Daniel prophesying about the Messiah. Do you know any other Messiah outside of whom the world called Christ? No. So Wednesday, he would die in the middle of the week, and his ministry would be 62 weeks. And so we kind of uh, shared that with you all a couple weeks ago. Please go back and look at that on YouTube or other type of uh, um, outlets, uh, social outlets, uh, in which we talk about uh, how long was the Mashiach's ministry. And it was a year and a half when you begin to uh, look at all of the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you begin to look at them and you begin to look, map them out. You can literally map out his life and see there was only a year and a half. Daniel was right concerning his prophecy concerning the Mashiach. It was only a year and a half. It aligns itself with scripture. But of course, Eusebius and um, other redactors and copyists, that's why you've got to be careful and rightly divide the word of truth. Why? Because much of the New Testament has what we call interpolations. It has redactions. It has textual variants. Uh, it um, has a number of um, um, uh, what we call amanuensis. And so we have to be very careful with that because that was added. It's not in any original text. A lot of things were added. So we got to be careful as to rightly divide the word of truth. These are people who have taken the King James Version or any Eurocentric, ethnocentric version, Germanic versions of the scriptures, and they have twisted it. Just like Jeremiah chapter said, Jeremiah chapter 8 and 8, that they have, with a lying pen, they have twisted the scriptures. So we got to be very careful when it comes to that. So is Mother's Day pagan, yes or no? By the way, this picture is a picture of whom? Rhea. Y'all know Rhea from the hood, right? This is Rhea. So if you recall any of my lessons on Thanksgiving, on Christmas or any other day, notice that she is the wife or of Cronus, of Cronus. We talked about Cronus a little bit. We've talked about um, um, Ceres. Ceres is where you get the, get the ideal cereal from because it's the goddess of wheat, the etymological terms. Now, why do we call things pagan? Can we Christianize everything? Do we have the volition to Christianize everything? We can't. We can't reclassify what, what the Most High call evil. We can't just make it good, put a stamp, and say, we're going to celebrate it, and we're going to celebrate Christ on it. Can we do that? Can we reclassify evil? That's what Eve tried to do, right? Most High calls something evil, and she reclassified it as good. And that's what we do, and particularly in the Christian faith, what we have become accustomed to is taking something that is pagan and reclassify it. When the Most High said, don't touch it, don't be around it, the Most High said, don't give into the ways of these pagans, and what we do is we somehow adopt their ways and say we're honoring Christ. That's almost like me sleeping with another woman and saying I'm honoring my wife by sleeping with another woman. Tawana ain't going for that. On for that. Right? And so this is how we do when we get involved because why? The God of the Bible is a jealous God. You can't blend these cultural expressions, these cultural norms, these cultural habits, and blend them. That's called syncretism. And blend them with the ways of the Most High. It's syncretism and has nothing to do with the Bible. Has absolutely nothing. This is why he said, don't give into the ways of the nation. Listen, this is a very narrow walk. That's why you're going to be hated for his namesake. Or you're going to be ostracized or vilified or demonized or looked at differently. But isn't it good to walk in the truth? Yes. Now, you must understand that it's very difficult to escape all paganism. You live in a pagan culture. But what you know better, you should be able to do better. 
Because where there's no law, there's no sin. And you are only judged by what you know. Number chapter 15. Why? Because you are of ignorance. You can't be judged by that. That's why Christ have come to be an atonement for those individuals out of ignorance. When we look at Matthew chapter 5, he talked about the least of who's going to be in the kingdom are those who don't know the law, so they don't teach the law. They're going to be least in the kingdom. But those who are going to be great in the kingdom are those who know and those who do. Now, so that's important. But paganism has run rampant. And we must understand that the Most High wants nothing to do with paganism. Because what it is, is to worship of other gods. It's what we call monolatrous henotheism. Monolatrous henotheism says that I, although I honor one God, I do not deny the existence of other gods. So Mother's Day go all the way back to Greek and Roman traditions. This is when they worship and honor the queen of heaven. Wait a minute, where does that term sound familiar? The queen, wait again? Yes, so Easter as well is the queen of heaven, is the queen of heaven. Next one, is the queen of heaven. And so if you celebrate traditionally, or if a celebration is traditionally honored by man, on a Sunday, most likely is pagan. Because it is paying homage to the sun god. This is what Constantinus, who's the real founder of Christianity, um, Constantinus, Constantinus made Rome a Christian system, but didn't stop worshiping Mithra. Or so a victi, out of the night that covers me, black as the pit. From pole to pole, I think whatever gods may be, is sun worship. It all goes back to worshiping of the sun. This is why the church eventually, and by their own omission, the Catholic Church switched the Sabbath from a Sabbath, what our traditional seventh day, to the first day of the week or Sunday. And it cannot be justified biblically. Well, people say, well, they they came together and broke bread on the seventh day. I'm sorry, on the first day of the week. Well, it also says in Acts chapter 2 that they broke bread every day. We know that it was Mashiach custom, Luke chapter 4, verse 12, to go and worship every Sabbath. So what would Jesus really do? It was his custom to worship on the Sabbath. The Catholic Church, by their own omission, said we, and our own volition, we had our, through our own latitudo, I was going to say something else. <laughs> but they had the audacity to change it. Why? Because it fits within the syncretic system of honoring the sun. So you will find if there, you can think of now a number of man-made holidays that are on Sunday. If it's on Sunday, chances are it is pagan. Father's Day is on what? On what? On a Sunday. All right, on a Sunday. You all are well read. So let's go through this really quickly um, so that you can see whether or not it is pagan or not. Is Mother's Day pagan? Now, didn't Apostle Paul say we are to honor our mother and father that our days may be long on the earth? Are we to honor our mothers and fathers? Absolutely, positively, unequivocally, without question, without doubt, we are to honor our mothers and fathers. But you see, that's why Mashiach told the woman from, Samaritan, from Samaria, he said, you know not what you worship. We are in a system that we don't know what we worship because we don't question anything. And things are passed down generationally that they have now have this residual impact and nobody, nobody does the research anymore. Right. Um, the illiterate for the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but individuals who have an inability 
to unlearn all the lies that's been told to them. And people hate the fact when you come against their traditions. It's called cognitive dissonance. Here's what Mashiach said. You love your tradition more than you love the truth. Cognitive dissonance is when I give you irrefutable evidence that what you are worshiping, what you are practicing, what you are observing is pagan. I give you empirical, testable, definable, rigorous research, strewed scholarship, here are all the facts, smack dab in your face, and you still become dismissive. People use ad hominems, which means they go on attack. It makes them severely uncomfortable because it goes to work against their theory because we have nostalgia with these holidays. We have memories of mama and memories of those things, but it's linked to something more sinister, something more nefarious, something more iniquitous that you beyond what you can even imagine or think. Watch this. So Mother's Day, of course, date back to ancient cultures in Greek. It's the mother goddess of heaven, as we know, and is the goddess Rhea. She's known as the mother of all gods. Again, the wife or of Cronus. She is the mother of all gods. It goes back to that. These practices didn't just come in with the forefathers of this country, or I should have said the four um, stillers of this country, but anyway. But the forefathers of this country, this goes all the way back to Greek and Roman systems. Now, nothing wrong. I wish my mother was still here to give her flowers, um, to take her out to eat, to um, love on her, but that should happen regularly. But when it comes to these systems that has been designed, they are, again, are more iniquitous and more sinister than what you and I can ever imagine. Let's continue. So similarly, we have a three-day Roman festival, of course, in March, and this goes all the way back to 250 B.C. that really stem from the queen mother of heaven that we read about in Jeremiah chapter 3. We read about in Jeremiah chapter 10. All throughout the scriptures, we read about this queen of heaven, right? This is what the pagans and the heathens, this is what they amalgamated within their culture. But this is, we look at the Roman goddess Magna Mater, and then we look at the Greek Sibeli, 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 only thing what the Romans did, they took the Greek pantheon of gods, and they gave them a new name. That's all they did. So they're really the same person, they just gave them a new name. And so this was the mother of gods, of God is what they worship in uh, 250 before the common era. Let's go. Let's go. So many, of course, countries throughout, um, did the mother goddess as well, goddess Rita, Rhea. So many countries throughout the world, of course, to vote this day or some case or two days or more of honoring their mothers. Now, nothing is wrong with honoring your mothers, as I said before. It is honorable. In fact, it is commanded to honor your mother and your fathers. Let's go. So one of the things they did, of course, as Christianity began to spread throughout uh, the, the centuries, um, they began to celebrate the mother church. You ever hear the mother church, right? In terms of Catholicism and Catholicity, you will find that we place the pagan traditions of honoring the mythological goddess. Of course, on the fourth Sunday in Lent, this is the weeping for Tammuz. Weeping for Tammuz, we find that in the scriptures as well. Tammuz is the son of Nimrod, right? The son of Nimrod um, and Simarabbas. And it became known as the Mothering Sunday to show appreciation for mothers. And guess what they gave them? Gifts of the mothering cake. Does that sound familiar? Now, it should be found in scriptures because this is not something new. This is something, these are ancient, archaic traditions of other systems that was anti-God, anti the Most High, right? Wanted nothing to do with the Bible and what the Bible throughout the, 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 all the ages of the Bible tells us to stay away from these practices because they do not honor me. What? So let's see if we can find it in the scriptures in Jeremiah. About honor me. Jeremiah 7 and 18. 
And the children gather wood, and the fathers kindle fire, and the women knead their dough. To make what? Cakes to who? And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they provoke me to anger. So the most high is when you operate in these systems, the most high is angry about them. It ain't like, oh, do what you want to do. You have the freedom and you have the latitude and the volition to do what you want to do as long as you honor me. Go ahead and sleep with that other God. But hey, as long as you're thinking about me. Hey, Tawana, you know, girl, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, um, you know, I just want to let you know. I'm, I got another girl on the other side of town. I'm, and, you know, I'm digging her right now. You, you know, you my first love. But, you know, I'm going with her. Psh, she's much younger. I'm telling you, remember before you had the babies, that's her. I, I'm telling you, I mean, she, she blows my mind. But you know what? I still love you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be with her, but I'm going to be thinking about you. That sound, that's nonsensical, isn't it? That's asinine, isn't it? That would get me in trouble, won't it? <laughs> but this is how we do the God of the Bible. We indulge into these other systems and these other gods and these other, and then we have the audacity to say that we're still worshiping the God of the Bible. Listen, it's enticing. This is what it says in Jeremiah chapter 3. It ain't going to be something that's born. It's going to entice you. It's going to lure you. It, it's more appeasing. It's more attractive. And this is why consistently throughout the Bible, what happens? Is that the Most High is consistently proving us. He's consistently testing us. We find that we left Egypt, Mizraim. We left Egypt. And those who, a whole generation died out. And another generation went into the wilderness, I mean, went into the promised land. As they get into the promised land, they're knocking off every nation. But the Most High said, leave some nations there. Why? Because the Most High wanted to test to see if whether or not we are going to amalgamate into those other systems. And guess what? It was inevitable. We did it. And that's why, of course, the children of Israel... The most high, according to scriptures, put them in slavery again. He tested them to prove them to see what was really in their hearts. See, once you know the truth, you can't go back. It's almost like a dog going back to their vomit. So for here and out, close your ears if you don't want to hear the truth. All right. All right. But it's un un unavoidable, right? They make cakes to the queen of heaven. This is what they have done traditionally. With Rhea, traditionally with Cybele, recently with these other gods. They bake cakes to them. Sound familiar? And then that's what birthed what your mother's day. Continue. So over the time, it began to coincide with the celebration of the mother church, mother and Sunday. You can continue. Oh, the spiritual power that gave, of course, Christians life to protect it, them from harm. That's why the term Christian is a, a relatively old term. It was a term used before even Mashiach came on the scene, whom they call Christ before he came on the scene through Serapis. When you go back to Egypt, there was Christians in Egypt long before we have what the world called Christ, whom we call the Messiah or the Mashiach or Yahusha in Hebrew, Aramaic Yeshua. Long before, and these Serapis were idol occult worshipers. So continue. And so the second Sunday of May, of course, like many others, all right, like so many other holidays, is rooted in pagan sun worship, including Father's Day, always fall on the third Sunday of June, right? And it is honoring their most powerful God they have, and that is soul. Where we get the word solar from, or it is sun worship. Sun worship. So it's Mother's Day pagan. You bet your apple bottoms it is. It is absolutely, positively, unequivocally, without question, without doubt, it is pagan. It is in terms of uh, capitalism, in terms of consumerism, it is the third highest 
and when it comes to strengthening and boosting the economy, more people put more, it's only two other holidays that more people invest more money into. Other than that, Mother's Day is number three on the list in terms of where our economic power is going to. More cards on Mother's Day than any other holiday of the year. And that's what it does. Not only do this pagan, paganism, does it not only divert your worship, but it drain your pockets. I honor my wife as being a mother. I honor, my, my mother isn't here, but I honor my mother-in-law. Um, I honor the emos and the mothers of this assembly and all the assemblies of the Great Awakening Assemblies. I honor all mothers. They should be honored. But when you celebrate and you observe Mother's Day, you're getting involved in something that, is, that you don't really have the knowledge or of what you are involved in. Because it goes back to paganism. That is a very short version of it. We can spend eight weeks talking about the pagan roots of Mother's Day. If you feel like, man, or you can't get, I can't do nothing. We can't do nothing right. Then that means, listen, you're going through conviction. Condemnation, conviction make you feel like giving up. I'm sorry, condemnation make you feel like giving up. But conviction make you feel like getting up. The most high is a jealous God. He doesn't want you worshiping anything that's going to divert your attention off of him. It's not that people don't have access to the truth. It's just most people don't want to hear it. Because it blow their religious illusion. That's why the scripture talks about a strong delusion. People rather believe a lie than a truth. And they'll kill you. They'll kill you over a lie. And so that's going to be the biggest threat of our, our generation. It's the lies that's been told to us. And people will defend the lie over the truth. Because I understand it has nostalgia. It has sentimental value. Christmas is associated with mama and daddy and the Christmas tree and waking us up and eating good bacon in the morning and all those things. And when you, when you, you attack that, it's almost you're attacking them. Because they are deeply in, in mesh with those sentiments and those expressions. It's their memories and mama's gone now. And so that's an attack on mama. And they don't say that, but subconsciously, it's an attack on mama. It's an attack on grandma. It's an attack on them. But they don't understand that even grandma and mama and them have bought into regurgitated dogma without anyone ever asking is what we're doing is right. right? Hallelujah. That is the Hebrew apologetic of the week.